I'm sure that you've had a goodly dose of that prolific medium. Can you hear me? Yeah, hold it close. Prolific medium prose. I doubt that you would feel much worse if I were now to speak in verse. Although there's much that seems so wrong, the folks who take a view that's long find that the third world's on a surge. So let's not give in to the urge to think that there is little hope. In fact, we have a lot of scope. The world will still ameliorate all by itself, and that is great. But then, with a collective fact and guidelines on how we should act, things will happen that much faster. And that is why we need to master all goals of UNSDG. Of course, all of us clearly see that governments will play their roles in achieving all these goals. But we still need to understand that business can give a helping hand. And here I think we all ought to pay careful heed to Michael Porter. With shared value, there's no cost for doing good as nothing's lost. All it takes is a thinking brain to remove a societal pain and combine it with a business gain to create a sustainable chain of endless mutual benefit. This concept is a tremendous hit. Now the UN has a lengthy list, so in recounting some would be missed. So I will focus on just three that I think would be the key for all the others to fall in place and enable us to win the race. Good health through perfect sanitation, environment, and education. Most of these can be seen in our program, Good and Green. And so without partiality, our goal for all's neutrality, whether water, carbon, or solid waste, by 2020, we will make haste to make our net emissions zero. Will that make the group a hero? In 2010, the goal looked tall, but we took a reasoned call. Technology would save the day. So far, it has turned out that way. As technology takes a leap, green energy gets very cheap. Keen observers quickly saw that solar also tracks Moore's law. Whether groundnut shell or bagasse, our India is full of biomass. At first, we thought we'd have to spend, but that's not true, for in the end, the more we thought and the more we slaved, we did invest, but we also saved. And solar is still getting cheaper, and as we do start digging deeper, in India, it'll hit the goal of being cheaper than even coal in a handful of years. Already, we and our peers are sourcing solar electricity at lower rates than from the utility. For quite some time, we've been extorted as their finances aren't still sorted. A silver lining can be seen since it incentivizes green. Our cost of water is not so high, but yet we do attempt to try to reduce our water consumption. But all the same, it's a safe assumption. Our water use won't disappear, and so to be neutral, I fear we will have to mitigate. Though fortunately, I can state that developing a watershed doesn't cost much, and instead, our agribusiness can benefit. The government will do its bit, but where it fails, we'll fill the breach, and hopefully, we will reach many farmers on the cheap, but the benefits that we reap will compensate for the cost, and once again, nothing's lost. In training, we will play a role. A million people is our goal. You will agree, that is plenty. And we'll do it all by 2020. For society, we do our bit, but we also benefit. Farmers gain from better yield and buy our products for the field. Beauticians gain a livelihood as good practices are understood. Occasionally, they would select our products and we could elect to co-create what customers need together we would all succeed. The biggest bane of our nation is very poor sanitation. In time, of course, we will do more, but to begin, we will secure clean water in every operation. 
will contribute to the elimination of malaria and dengue in our nation. And our products will help sanitation. In Paris now, it would be strange if I don't talk of climate change. The whole earth seems to be on fire. In India, the situation's dire. Two crops have failed back to back. The weather gives us little slack. The summer monsoon was a dud, but Chennai had a winter flood. Republicans have seen no light, but those who have brains and sight now realize it is a fact and that humanity must act. The Cassandra say we must act fast or the tipping point will be, a, will be passed. There is a flaw that I see. The rate of growth of technology has always been exponential and waiting gives us more potential. The skeptics feel there is a bar and once we go much too far, there would be no turning back for the GHGs on a rising track. It shouldn't be a one-way flow. Today, of course, we hardly know how to use CO2 to grow our food rapidly and show that the problem can be solved. Our CO2 could be dissolved in liquids designed for high absorption or solids with chemical absorption. And then there is olivine, which when ground very fine, can take in lots of CO2. And, and these, of course, are just a few of the technologies that we will find once everyone applies their mind. And when green energy is cheap, from CO2 we can reap all our fuel. It's understood that the situation will be good if food and fuel are both renewed. Technology should be pursued. All of this, of course, is very great. But I'm not saying that we should wait. It would help if we could master these technologies that much faster. Some form of carbon price, but not too high, would still be nice. Change, alas, is often slow. In India, we already know that coal will give way to solar, but investment still is bipolar. <laughs> and so I think it would be nice if we have a carbon price. Coal will no longer rule the roost, and green will get a bigger boost. Technology will show the way. Technology will save the day. Whoa. <laughs> The other day when I left home, I never thought I'd hear a poem. <laughs> I loved you that you answered in a rhyme. It was comprehensive and sublime. 